Um, so I'm saying the speed of light isn't actually a speed at all um, because, you know, it isn't a speed limit. Photons go at the speed of light. You know, different particles go at the speed of light. It's a limitation. It's, it's a reflection of the limitation of our consciousness of this world. You know, so the world that we're used to, um, we think that's all there is. Actually, this is the world of charged particles. Um, particles that haven't got charge and haven't got mass can go at the speed of light. Um, so, actually, I th I'm saying that there's actually worlds beyond that. Those are those different dimensions that um, things like string theory, which is a um, theory of physics, actually talk about that there are many different dimensions to the universe. So I think the reason why that they're sort of hidden from us is because they're beyond our perception. They're beyond our normal perception. But they're not always hidden. And you mentioned this, they're the thing about U UFOs and yes. aliens and mm -hmm. ghosts and things. Sometimes people are absolutely convinced they've seen something. Yes, and other people will confirm that other people have seen nothing. Yeah. yeah. And so that, that to me is a plausible answer that for, for a time someone can see in a different dimension. Yes. In yeah. that dimension there's a whole new reality, reality that exists but you don't see it most of the time. Yes, exactly. And the key to it is consciousness. Um, and a lot of people um, know that ghosts, for example, um, if you believe in ghosts or not, you know, often the stories, if you collated the stories, they're often associated with people who've lived in the past with um, very shocking and emotionally disturbing histories. And uh, so again, you have that element of consciousness coming in. So again, you've got this other dimension that is, is it uh, this emotional shock that's made that dimension more tied to ours? So you have that element of consciousness and thought coming in, even with the, you know, the aspect of ghosts. You know, all the ghost stories seem to have the common thread. You hardly ever get a ghost that's had quite a regular life. And, <laughs> you, know, not, you know, coming back, there's no reason for them, you know. But, uh, uh. you know, the ones that usually have had a shocking past, you know. So there's the link there as well. And you talk about people in mental hospitals who are hearing voices or seeing visions. Mm. Now, again, you, you make the suggestion, which I think is probably very valid, that actually for them, it is real. Yeah. They're not yeah. making it up. But they're plugged into a different dimension and yeah. they're lacking grounding. Yes. And if they were more grounded here, then they would go, that would go more in the background yeah. and they'd find living in this life easier. Yeah, absolutely. I think a, a, a good example that I actually mentioned in, in the book is uh, the Nobel Prize winner John Nash, who um, a film was made That's out right, of his, his, film, yeah. um, his life called A Beautiful Mind. And uh, the, the film came out of a, a, a book by Sylvia Nazaire and she actually um, interviewed him and uh, put together a... a um, a book about his life and he actually says that these beings that he sees he, he was a, um, a mathematician who has also um, suffered from schizophrenia and um, he said that the beings that he, he saw beings talking to him and he thought that they were real and they were just as real as his ideas in mathematics and um, he ended up getting the Nobel Prize for economics um, that led to the Nobel Prize but he didn't, they didn't disappear for him. He just chose to ignore them. You know, so I think it would really help if we just understand that these beings are very, very real because they are actually consciousness in other dimensions. So um, I'm not saying that they um, do exist from a scientific perspective. I'm not saying this is a scientific proof. I'm saying with the science that we've got, there's no reason why we can't say these things. You know, I don't think that you can prove or unprove anything in science. It's just the be best fit for what we have now. But what we, what the knowledge that we have now, um, you know, we can say that these ghosts and even aliens <laughs> could actually be beings of consciousness in higher dimensions that are beyond the sort of normal perception horizon. But as you say, um, people now are starting to tune in to these higher dimensions and beyond this perception horizon. And are having kind of interesting experiences. A lot of people having angelic experiences, for example. They won't yeah. talk about it, you know, because they're just a bit worried about, uh, you know, sounding a bit cuckoo. But you know, there's <laughs> there's a lot of people. It's it's a it's a growing subject. Yeah. And you also talk about healing as well when mm. people have dramatic healings. And I think there was you used an example of the salamander, where yeah. actually uh, from the actual egg you could measure the actual 
not measured, but you had the outline of the actual fully grown salamander. Is that correct? Or yes. Really yeah, there's some experiments that were done um, by uh, Robert uh, O'Becker and um, I think uh, uh, Harold uh, Saxon Burr did some of these experiments as well. Where um, they were actually measuring the fields. These were the electromagnetic the fields, fields. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Around um, you know salamanders because salamanders, if you um, cut off one of their limbs. <laughs> Not, not a nice experiment to do, but they grow back again. Yes. And they, um, it was found by these early experimenters that if you change the voltage uh, potential across the limb, um, the limb won't grow back again. So there's something in the field around the salamander that was actually causing the shape of the salamander. And that's a very important discovery because um, we still don't know what makes us the shape that we are. You know, if you look deep into biology, you know, you can say, well, you, you've got your heart on one side and you've got your liver on one side. How that happens is still a mystery. You know, there's all sorts of theories out there, but nobody really knows. And uh, so this sort of work is very interesting, that the field comes first uh, before the shape of the actual, f what we call physical. Yes. Yeah. So if you understand that, then it has all sorts of implications for healing and um it means that maybe, as I'm trained as a bioenergy healer, and I did actually um, sort of hands-off healing, so I would actually sort of feel what you call, what I call the antimatter region of somebody, but somebody calls, you know, the judicially so, called the, the aura. aura. Is, yeah, yeah, judicially yeah. called the aura. You know, so I would sort of sense people's fields. And anyone can develop this sort of sense. You don't, you don't have to be gifted psychic or anything. It's quite easy to teach. And so you can sense a field around somebody. And, uh, you know, there's a possibility, therefore, uh, if, uh, if you manipulate the field, then you can manipulate the physical body and help that to heal. So that's one of the ways that, um, that healing, sort of hands-off healing, could actually, could actually work. So you don't even have to touch the person or even be in the same room as them. Because, um, you know, if you understand that consciousness is fundamental, then your intention is um, very, very important. In, in the world and your intention is very important in, in healing and there's lots of experiments to show that um, uh, intention experiments that have been done by very reputable scientists with um, very sort of strict um, experimental regimens um, to show that when people show it put intentions on yeah. uh, a subject for example a random event generator so that's the Electronic Around, uh, random event generator. Okay. So that's the electronic equi equivalent of tossing a coin. Okay. You know, so as everyone knows, if you toss a coin uh, enough times, it comes out 50-50 heads or tails. Yeah. So you can set up a, an experiment where you have the electronic equivalent of a, 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 a coin tossing mechanism. And uh, so you can say, um, you know, to somebody, you know, which one do you want it to come out more, heads or tails? And they can focus on this random event generator to come out more heads. You know, and um, instead of just coming out 50-50, it will come out uh, more one or the other. Okay. And uh, more heads, and uh, they put it through this statistical analysis, and it turns out to be statistically significant. So um, there's all these experiments to show that distant intention like that is actually something that's significant. And um, interestingly, that's another effect of quantum physics, that two particles that are... Um, it's a long way apart, actually have sort of connections with each other. So um, they actually seem to know which way the other one is spinning. So do you, do you remember that I said that you can, um, it's your observation of a particle that actually makes it what it is. Yes. Well, sometimes you can twin, um, you could take twin particles, you could pair up particles and uh, send one to sort of... Um, you know, the moon or whatever, and uh, they're twins so that one is actually spinning up or one is spinning down. They've got opposite spins. So if one was up, one was down, the, oh, one was down, one was up, vice versa. And um, until you actually measure that particle, it's in a state of both up and down because your observation has not brought it into reality, which is an odd sort of effect of quantum physics, but that's how it is.